Welcome to Balanced Life with Debbie Carlin Boyle, conversations connecting to a healthier you, the show that gives you all the latest and greatest health and wellness information to inspire you to live a life of balance and joy. Debbie Carlin Boyle is a health and nutrition coach, personal trainer, and fitness instructor who helps her clients live in balance with everything that feeds us in addition to the food on our plate. Please welcome your host, Debbie Carlin Boyle. Hello. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Welcome. It's Tuesday. I know it's the third Tuesday of the month, and I only do my shows the second and fourth Tuesday of the month. But with the holiday, I wanted to get a show in before I took some time off in the next couple of weeks. I think it's like three weeks from now that I'll be back up again. And I have a good show for the new year, so stick around because it's an important show because we all make those resolutions for the new year, and uh, this show is going to address that. So stick around. But before we get into it, I want to make sure that you know that you can become part of this conversation too. So if you're watching live, we'd love to hear from you. And the way you can do that is a couple of ways. One is you could call in. And the number here is area code 323-524-2599. I'm going to say it again because Tony likes me to do it twice. It's area code 323-524-2599. And if you can't call in but you have a question or you want to make a comment, go to my Facebook page right now where I'm streaming live, Balance Life by Debbie, D-E-B-I. And you can write in the comments. I check during the show to see if there's a question or a comment from somebody who can't call. And we address it live on the show. And now, if it's after the fact, you can always go back to my Facebook page or my Instagram and ask a question or make a comment there. Or or my YouTube channel, where the show will eventually be put onto and live forever. So if you want to make a comment, ask a question, we'll get back to you because I always get a hold of my guests and have them get back with an answer. So that's the way we keep the conversations going. That's the intent of the show is that you're part of it. It's not just informational, but it is also something that you can join in on the conversation. So before we get started, I also want to tell you a little bit about me. So I'm Debbie Carlin Boyle. I'm a health and wellness coach. I'm a personal trainer, a fitness instructor, and and a nutrition coach, and I help people with everything that they need to get an alignment in their life in order to live a life of balance, enjoy, happiness, longevity. So that's something different for all of us, as we know. And one of the things that we have to do is figure out where it is that you find that is not in alignment the way you want it to be and is bringing other things down in your life, whether it's your food or whether it's your exercise or lack of sleep or stress. There's so many things that can get in the way with balance that I can help you get get readjusted and aligned again. So to get in touch with me, you just go to my website, which is Balanced Life by Debbie. Again, if you're watching, it's up on the screen. It's D-E-B-I dot com. And there, there is a contact us, little information that you can just pop your name in and I'll get right back to you. And there's also a free giveaway on there, a little pop up for the winter. It's a three-day detox with breakfast, lunch, and dinner for three days. It's healthy. It helps you feel light on your feet. Just It's going to get you a good, especially this time of year, it will give you a great jump start into the new year. So go grab that. It's free. Love for you to have that. Also, while you're at it, you can check out the platforms where my podcasts live, which is like iTunes radios and Amazon and Spotify. And of course, my YouTube channel, which you can subscribe to. And there you're going to find shows that are in the health and wellness realm. Uh, In the hundreds, actually. So anything that you may have a question about, I've done a show on. Whether it's like, is there healthy alcohol out there? If I love wine, how can I keep that in my life? I have a show on that. If I love chocolate, how do I keep that in my life? I have a show on that. And so on down the line. So go ahead and get involved in that. I would love to hear from you and have you. And you can always give a review because that's 
every podcaster something every podcaster wants. So again, thank you for joining us today. We're going to get started with the show because I know it's going to be a really good show for you today um, with this new year coming up. So having said that, with uh, the new year coming up, typically the start of the new year brings with it many resolutions that we make for ourselves. And the most popular, of course, is to lose weight, eat healthier, and to exercise. But wouldn't it be wonderful if these resolutions wouldn't, weren't like a do-over at the beginning of every year and they become a permanent lifestyle instead? So meet Narit Rush, who is a holistic nutrition coach and food scientist. Narit empowers 40-plus-year-old and ambitious women to navigate perimenopause and menopause with ease so they can live joyful, healthy, and mindful lives while pursuing their careers and dreams. With a lifelong love affair with food and as an educated food scientist, Nareet has traveled the world while ridding foods of artificial additives to develop natural, delicious, and healing whole foods. With the stress of it all becoming overwhelming, she spun it into an opportunity to help other driven, career-focused women refocus their priorities. She combines her decades of experience designing menus and programming for A-list celebrities and global healthy food brands. With her training in nutrition and hormone health, she helps women elevate their well-being. With her knowledge of hormone balance through food and lifestyle practices, Nareet helps her clients reach their ideal weight by regaining their energy and balance in their lives. She's been featured in Forbes, Business Wire, Voyage LA, QSR Magazine, and among many other publications. So let's talk about our health and some healthy hacks and how we can start eating better and delicious and healthy food starting today. So Please welcome my guest, Norit Reich, to the show. Hi, Norit. Hello, hello. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Thank I you. can't wait. This conversation is going to be just perfect. Thank per- you. Perfectly it, timed, too. Yes, I was just going to say, what good timing. And thank you so much for uh, coming at this time of year, because it's a busy time, as we know, because we were just talking about the traffic to get here, and there's no parking <laughs> out here by the studios. And so it was just, it's really nice of you to take, and, and neither of us live that close. So I really appreciate it's your pleasure. time and energy thank to have you. Thank you for having me. Yes, I'm, I'm happy to host you, and I hope I didn't destroy your last name. No worries. Good. No worries. Good. <laughs> We're going to um, learn a little bit about you. I'm so lucky that I get, I know you because we take yoga class together. Yoga, and I'm going to give a shout out right now to my daughter. Hi, Marissa, if you're watching. The best teacher <laughs> in the world. <laughs> She's, I'm not going to, you know, I'm a little biased, but I have to, you know, I know I get a lot of feedback from people who take these classes. They're hot yoga classes. And I got to tell you, if you guys live, if you're watching and you live anywhere near Westlake Village, this is the class. It's Westlake Yoga Company. And these, I mean, there's many great classes there, but... Marissa's class is especially, um, you know, you're going to get everything you came for and then some. So, and that's how we met in the locker room. We did. Yes. (laughs) And I recognized you because you do, you post and they kind of repost for you and somehow you came up on my feed and I could see that you were a health and wellness coach. So then I started following you. And then the day that I ran into you in the locker room, it's like, you need to do my show. You're, you know, you've got a really great, strong background in in everything I'm about. So, um, but before we get into the nitty gritty, Mm -hmm. I want to hear a little bit about you, your young life, where you came from and kind of the road to what you're doing today. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. So my name is Nuri Dreich. I'm originally from Mexico City. I grew up there until I was 23. Then I got married and we moved over to do a master's in England. And my my first degree is in food technology. So I'm a food engineer. And then my master's is in food science. And my passion has always been natural, healthy food. I was the crazy person in the class that would ask, but why do we have to add all this stuff? And everybody would look at me like, what is she talking about? This was many years ago, and I really was very passionate about making food natural and providing all the health that food can give you through Did you grow up that way? 
Did you? Were, I, was your family? Did they cook every whole single meal. healthy, non-processed yes. food? Yes, they did. So that was something that yes. you knew that was familiar yeah. to you. Yeah. So I, I was very blessed that we would have home cooked meals every single day. Uh, delicious in Mexico at the time you used to go to the markets and buy fresh produce it was really beautiful so I grew up with that and I knew how good I felt and I always passed this crazy girl trying it all out and doing all the healthy things even the things that now we know were not right like mm-hmm. don't eat fats I L- mean like what don't eat fats oh fats yeah, yeah. they were like oh I know that don't was... eat fats are so bad uh, yeah. for you and they're so good for yeah, us the right? right kind of fat good exactly. fat yeah which we'll exactly. talk about today yes so um I was always like super super passionate and then when I moved over to England my first job was to make food clean for an amazing company called pret and they used to do uh, gourmet diet well gourmet sandwiches and salads and all ready to go uh, but they wanted it to be completely clean so oh, I made good job. all the food <laughs> completely clean, including GMO free, all the way to the feet of the animals that we were using the products. So oh, it, that's it was a great and background. it was the first company that made that happen when GMO came about. Yeah. So I uh, then traveled the world developing products like that uh, for them. For them. Okay. So we opened Hong Kong, Tokyo, New York, wow. and I used to travel and then develop all the food in those markets, and then. Uh, my husband grew up in California. He wanted to be closer to family, so we moved to Northern California in 2006 okay. to 2008. And the economy was kind of dodgy. Yeah, it started going down. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I was still doing uh, beautiful natural products. At the time, I developed these ready meals, but I was based out of fish. With a, It was called steam technology, and you would put them in the microwave, and it would reverse the way it cooks. So microwave cooks inside out. Right. This will cook outside in. Okay. And you could sear your tuna like like you go to a sushi restaurant uh, right. and slice it a bit pink in the middle. So we ended up doing that. Oh, cool. Yeah, and we launched it in Canada, and then the economy just went like... Brrr. Which is a hard <laughs> time for people to buy a luxury item exactly. like that. Yeah. Exactly. So hard. Yeah, so we moved back to Mexico City. Wow. For three years. Um has its ups and downs. But I still had a client here who used to do gourmet diet ready meals for all the celebrities. And I helped them develop programs for them. And then they hired me as a full-time employee and I moved back to the States. And I've been in LA for the past 10 years. And I've done uh, gourmet diet ready meals. I've done frozen yogurt and desserts. And I worked in coffee and tea for the past seven years. Really? Yes. Are you still doing that in the coffee and yes, tea? Yes, I do. You do? I do. So so when you say you work, you work specifically for the companies yes. to make a better, healthier version mm-hmm. of that, are you allowed to name the companies? Um, so the first one was called Freshology. They don't exist anymore, but they used to feed all the celebrities. Like we would have... Katy Perry with her specific request and J Lo with her specific uh, request, I get it. and I would do their menus okay. and, and cater to specific what they needed. Then uh, Pink Berry, oh yeah, um, that was the second one, and um, I worked with Coffee Bean for a while. Mm, Coffee okay. Bean to live. Okay, for a while. so when you say you work with them, just so I know, I mean, because you're a food scientist, and I, I kind of want you to. Give me the definition of what a food scientist is. Okay. So, because so I'm not 100% sure. There's like a whole range of things you can do from developing equipment for a factory. Okay. Uh, but my passion is the creative side, which is coming up with the recipes and the products and cleaning up the ingredients and making sure that what you end up consuming tastes absolutely delicious. It's balanced, it's healthy, as healthy as possible. Or if it's a treat that it really delivers on the amazing flavor that we're developing. Right. So okay. That's, that's so that makes sense. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So you get to the nitty gritty of the gritty. food, yes. take out the bad, put in the good yes. and, and make it delicious. Exactly. And what then it just has to be it. Because I feel that living a ho- uh, healthy, joyful life needs to be delicious every single day. I agree. And that's why we talked about how we wanted to title today's show, because I, this is, you know, I have health, a lot of health coaching clients, and one of the things that I hear, in spite of all of the suggestions and the menus and the recipe guides and books that I give them, um, is that it, you know, they're bored and it doesn't taste so good. It's, yes. And it has to be delicious in order for you 
to maintain it. And Completely. we're going to get we're more gonna get into, into that yes. why and how. But, I, 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 you know, knowing where you came from and knowing, I, I love that you dissect food. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> that's what you do as a scientist. You're, you know, you're, you're you I dissect it. it and put it back together. Yeah, the way it should yes. be, which yes. is fabulous. And I do that it's... for my clients, too. So uh, I've been doing holistic health coaching for the past two years. Yes. And, um, Same as me. It's, yeah. So it really is about delivering beautiful food every day so you're excited to eat this so you're excited to maintain this healthy lifestyle and connect the mind body connection of how amazing you actually feel right 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 it, it, because you don't really realize like my story is a little different in the fact that I grew up on processed food and I called myself a processed kid right so I didn't feel good by the time I hit my late teens which was right around the time I you know was graduating high school and going to college and I, you know, it showed in the way I look, it showed in my hair, it showed in my nails, it showed in my face was you know, like green, you know, like I was, I grew up in such bad food. There were four kids, my mom didn't like to cook, so fast food was the thing. And I just, food just became like anything I could get mm -hmm. quickly and cheaply. And I suddenly had this turnaround that said, because I, I saw a lot of disease around me within my family, because obviously you are what you eat yes. and it was making them sick whether it was heart disease or cancers or autoimmune disease i saw people going down for the count and by the time i got in college that's when i reversed everything and i started eating off the salad bars and i took processed food and at the time i took all animal products out too mm -hmm. and the shift in the way I felt and the way I looked and the way I could sort of navigate life and school and, yes. you know, and then I attracted the boyfriend I wanted, you know, things started to change just by making my health my priority. I think, you know, health is the only thing that we don't get back in no. time, right? So right. if you can manage the two and really so true. concentrate on eating healthy for now, but if eating healthy for the future... Look at you, how amazing you look now. It's uh, like incredible. Yeah. I could not believe that you said you grew up on processed food. I, well, I did for the first 18 years, well, but then I shifted. It. And I'm about to be 65, so it's been a lot of years well, in the shift. Worked. Yes, thank it you. It definitely has Thank worked. you for the compliment. I appreciate it. I, yeah, it is. A, a, it's always a work in progress, you know, and uh, things, you know, and you actually say this on your website, but things change as we age. And that's the whole hormone connection that I want to talk about because, you know, obviously there's a loss of hormones as we age and hormones play a big part in our digestion and the way we assimilate food and the way we get our vitamins, our nutrients, our minerals, everything that our body needs to be healthy and to feel good and to live that life of joy. Um, but horm as we lose hormones and women... Now, I know you work, as I mentioned, with women over 40. So these are women, perimenopause, menopause, that are going like this and, um, and not making the adjustments they need to make. Can we talk about hormones and the connection to food? So let, maybe course. a definition of hormones and then how it well, relates. So I'm going to simplify it. Okay. I think um, you need to look at hormones as the secret messengers in your body that make everything happen. When they work, you feel good, everything's flowing, things so are happening. This is how life should feel. When they're out of balance and out of whack, that's when certain symptoms start to appear. So if you saw in the other graph, you have this, you're fine, you're stable, and then it starts to go like this. And that's when you start to get all these perimenopausal symptoms of mood swings and extra belly fat and headaches and loss of libido. There are so many things that are happening in your body that the hormones control. Yes. So when they're not balanced, things just go out of whack. But as you well said, with food and a healthy lifestyle, you can actually help them. You to can help balance, them to balance them themselves back. out. Yes. And when you do this, all those nasty symptoms tend to kind of quiet down. And you tend to feel so much better. And your energy levels go up. So you can exercise the way you want to. You can show up to your life the way you want to. And you can finish your day and still have energy to spend with your kids or your partner or your friends. 
And to me, that is how life should be lived. Like, yes. Otherwise, it's so sad. Or it's not being, you're not living life, quote unquote, to its fullest. Exactly. I agree with you so much. I love the fact that you can show up, you know, show up to be the best version of you. And as we know, and as you, uh, did you go through the Institute of, uh, yeah, so, we, so we have yes. the same education, yeah, in, in the new, that part of the nutrition. I'm not a food scientist, but um you know, we learned there that, uh, you know, food changes everything and food can heal and food can make us sick. So it's through food that we start with. But then there is a lot of all the other things, yes. like I mentioned at the top of the show as well, that come into play. And but if all those other things you're doing right, but you're still eating poorly and processed food, chances are you're not going to hit that goal. You're not going to reach that balance because, you know, we're all individuals and we all don't assimilate food. Your, your food could be my poison. My food could be your 100%, poison. hundred percent, yes. And you don't know that until it's sort of a process of elimination to see how our bodies react to certain things. But there are globally things that we know, and that's the whole blue zone kind of thing. But there's globally things we know that really do help to heal us and help make us you know feel better look better are better and then there are things we know that are really really bad for us so if we were speaking from a hormone point of view in terms of activating the good hormone you know making sure that our um you know i i know it's a, a combination of many things but to the feel good hormones you know for our endorphins and all for all of that to be activated what what do you suggest? What should we be doing right now? What's the first, like, three most or five most important things? Okay. If you can consider that the first most important thing is to balance your blood sugar, that is... Bingo. Step number one. If you can do that, everything else starts to fall into place. And if you can see in this chart that I put up, if you overeat your carbs, you have extra, that ends up just being deposited as fat in your body. If you are not eating enough, if you're actually skipping breakfast, which a lot of people tend to do mm -hmm. for health purposes. Well, yeah, they're doing uh, time-released eating exactly, or intermittent fasting. Exactly. So yeah. that actually causes your body to start to use muscle for energy, and then you get cravings. And what happens then? Your body's under stress, and the first thing that you're going to grab is whatever can give you the fastest energy, which tends to be sugary things. Right. And that's where all the cravings come about. So if you can maintain this stable level of blood sugar... That's the key point. And then your hormones tend to rebalance. Obviously, stress is an important factor. Mm -hmm. So it's cortisol. Cortisol plays a role. So everything's intertwined. When you're talking hormones, it's everything like one plays with the other, we place right. with the other. Right. So I would say consider those two things um, and inflammation. And you have the perfect rounded world of controlling these hormones and making them happy. So what kind of things? So blood sugar being very important. And now they have, and we've, I've actually had somebody on the show, um, the, you know, blood uh, sugar monitors. So we can see, because everybody, again, we're all so different. So we can see our reaction to food if, from every bite. You can yes. see what, where you spike the blood sugar and where you're off the chart and, you know, too low, mm -hmm. too high, and where you want to find that neutral level. Um, what... What are the best foods on average, not again, everybody's individual, that we should be looking at? Like first thing in the morning, people tend to eat their breakfast. And this is probably one of the reasons why I think intermittent fasting could be good for you is because most people's breakfast is dessert. Yes. And that's it's a, just a terrible way to start your day. <laughs> Right? Because sugar is the most evil thing that I, I don't care who you are. It's not good for anybody. Mm -hmm. And it can play out in a negative way in many ways. It doesn't just mean you're overweight. I mean, there's skinny fat. There's all kinds of mm -hmm. skinny unhealthy. And um, so what if, if to eat a quote unquote and have the right balance of breakfast, what should we be eating first thing in the morning? Protein. 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 If in, you can actually combine protein and healthy fats in every single meal, but breakfast, super critically important, then you'll be much better off. It, it balances your blood sugar. It will stabilize that energy. 
and you won't be having these cravings that later on in the day you'll have, you know, when at three o'clock you're just slumped. Like and you, you want to go to sleep. or yeah. that's, Everybody goes to the Starbucks for that at that exactly. time. Exactly. Yeah. You go to your latte yeah. and pile with sugar because you need that energy. Obviously, right. your body's protecting you. That You need energy. It will yeah. tell you what to have. But it's the wrong thing to have. It's a false. Yeah. It's a false. It's a false. It, it actually will take you back It'll down. It'll take you back yeah. down. But you'll mm-hmm. crash very quickly. So if you can add protein to your breakfast and protein and healthy fats to every single meal, you'll feel so much better. That's the first change I make with my clients, and it's life-changing. So a good protein breakfast would be like eggs and avocado. You can have eggs and avocado, but if you are, I like sweet things. Okay. So I tend to do chia pudding. Oh, like my, oh, you have the recipe on yes, your website. I have the yeah. recipe. It's one of my favorite things because you, I'm always really busy, so I try to have really practical things that don't take much to make. Yes. So you make a big batch. You make it on Sunday night. It takes two seconds to put together, and the next morning it's ready to go. And I top it with healthy fats, so a lot of nuts. So walnuts are amazing for hormones, pecans, mm-hmm. pistachios, anything. And Change it up. sources of many different vitamins. Exactly. Yeah. Then chia is a fabulous protein source as well. Mm-hmm. Then, I just put one in my smoothie today. My, it's, it's my so delicious. matcha green tea smoothie. Exactly. So delicious. So delicious. And then I tend to add um, extra superfoods like goji berries and cacao nibs for antioxidants. And um, if I'm feeling it, I add uh, collagen for extra protein. And okay. I mix that in every yeah. morning. Collagen's yeah, collagen's good. It's good for your nails It's and good your for hair. nails and your hair. Yeah. And uh, it also works with your cells, so it really helps to balance this blood sugar. And I top it with a little bit of fruit. And with fruit, it's important to know that it's amazing for you, has lots of antioxidants. It really delivers on fiber as well, but you can't overdo it. So you need to control the amount of fruit that you're eating. And that's one thing I didn't know when I was growing up because I love fruit so much and I yeah. love sweet things. Big part of Mexico, too. Yes, right? Yeah. They're all over. Yeah. Everything's like yeah. that. So I would say if it's berries, berries have a low glycemic index. You can yes. have up to one cup. But if it's something more like mangoes and something more tropical like papaya or things like that, keep it to half a cup. And then it's balanced. The, all the proportions are there. You'll have healthy fats. You'll have protein. And you won't crash. And you'll feel amazing. Right. And you won't spike those blood sugar oh, the levels. The blood sugar levels yeah. and the fatty yeah. belly that ends up with that and your crashes and the extra, you know, latte with ex- I love caramel. Extra caramel. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's easy. I mean, sugar is very addicting and it's in everything, everything, every label. You know, one of the first things I do with my client, I'm sure you do with yours, is that I have them turn things around and read labels and see what is you know obviously the more ingredients and if you can't pronounce them you don't want to put them in your body if you don't know what it is yes and uh, there's always inevitably a sugar content in there i mean the worst thing is uh corn uh, fructose corn syrup Mm -hmm. which nobody should be having i mean that to me just pollutes your body to a point where just wait for it because some disease is going to get you sooner or later if you don't get that that's about as processed as you can get and as dangerous as you can get um so so those are so just healthy fat and protein in the morning Mm -hmm. and then how do you suggest that you space out your meals to keep the blood sugar level balanced so it depends on everybody right you well said it everybody's different Mm -hmm. some people need to eat five meals a day some people three is fine right Right. so if you're hungry eat <laughs> yeah, your body's doing that growing. Yeah, it's like yeah, just you, eat. Don't yes, don't your body's stop telling you. Yeah, something. your body's telling you something. Especially after a hot yoga class that you've uh, done for over classes. an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Within an hour, if I don't eat, I you know it's it it like something is gnawing at me. Yes. Literally, you have to. Your body has lost a lot of. It's been depleted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Know? And you're burning fat. Right. But your first source of energy should you know normally in the body is is carbs. Right. So providing your body with enough nutrients and energy levels, then you'll be able to continue to perform throughout the day. Right. Yeah. And um, we did. I did a show with uh, um, a doctor. In, she was from India, and uh, she's an Ayurveda, uh, uh, Ayurveda uh, specialist. And she talked about like eating in the middle of the day more of your raw food. Mm-hmm. So you have your warm foods at night. So like if you're going to do your salads, it's more ideal because your body will assimilate it better if you do it 
earlier in the day rather than right before you go to sleep. Mm -hmm. Um, Otherwise, it has a harder time breaking down the like salads, raw food stuff. So so I suggest my clients, which I've been doing anyway, even before I really understood those principles, um, I suggest that they, you know, do a salad with protein source on it. Mm And enjoy that and make their own homemade salad dressing so there's no sugars. I mean, salad dressing labels drive me crazy for mm-hmm. the most part. And you can make them so cheaply with, you know, fresh squeezed lemon or uh, a good balsamic olive oil. vinegar yes. and a great olive oil. You know, and put whatever, you know, you can talk to this, but spices yeah. and herbs, so healthy for us, right? Really healthy. Lots of extra addition to our nutrition, but add flavor so you're not bored. So right. one of the things that I think it's very important, it's a combination of things. The first one is, so you don't get bored, it's really important that you keep your flavors varied, the different colors of the vegetables and yes. fruits consistently. Eat the rainbow. Yeah, pick the rainbow, if, even if it's not on the day, throughout the week. And then you're giving your body not only excitement, because the flavors are different, you're giving it different nutrients, yes. which your body would thank you, thank you for, right? right? Then spices add so much flavor and can make something really bland and boring really exciting again. So I love Middle Eastern spices like za'atar and sumac. Mm. Um, and then I also love adding turmeric with black with pe- pepper. pepper. Because that's the way, it's very anti-inflammatory, it's correct? It's super anti-inflammatory. Yeah. And when you add the black pepper, it potentiates the effect of the curcumin, which is the anti-inflammatory agent, uh, right. by 2,000%. Wow. It's crazy. That's a lot. It's, yeah. It actually makes it work. I didn't realize that. I just yeah. knew that they activated yeah. each other. So okay, I tend go. to roast a lot of vegetables with that's it. That's great. Uh, or I make, like, I add it to my coffee. You know, just keep the spices coming. Fish, veggies work so well with them. Yeah. So I tend to do that a lot. Do you have a lot of, and, and we're going to take a quick break, but do you have a lot of clients that are plant-based and and then you have to work around the protein sources because so, there's a lot of processed plant-based food yes. that we have to be careful yeah. about. Um, so I don't have that many. And the ones I have told me I want to be completely plant-based end up understanding that in some cases – our hormones do need the animal protein because the animal protein is a complete amino acid. Whereas when you have plant-based sources of protein, you just need to combine them the right way. It's very difficult. So you end to up having the complete healthy. amino acid profile. Yeah. Um, so if you do that, you're fine. It just takes longer. Right. You have to be very yes. vigilant. I think if you're plant-based, yes, and to, they to also get all have, the tend to have more need. carbs, right? And yes. with the hormones imbalanced. We don't tend to do that well with carbs, so controlling the amount of carbs you're eating also helps. Right. Which I also, you know, when you were saying eating salads in the middle of the day, I would say if you're going to eat a carb like rice or anything like that, have it at lunchtime and don't have it at dinner. Yeah. Because your body doesn't have enough time to digest that energy and you want to use it up instead of putting it as fat for storage later. But yet the American diet is, you know, pasta at night rice and potatoes and all the starchy, heavy, high glycemic food that Mm -hmm. is going to spike our blood sugar before we go. And what I I always uh, say to my clients, if you're going to do that, or even if you don't, after dinner, go take a walk. That will regulate your blood sugar. Even just 10 minutes helps so much. Exactly. And if you can't walk outside because this time of year of the weather, just Put on some music and dance for 10 yes. minutes, yes. you know, or do just move. You can yeah, just shake get up, it up and move. Shake Don't it up. sit on the couch and yes. be dormant because that's going to get everything back to a normal blood sugar. So we're going to take a quick break uh, for one of my sponsors. When we come back, maybe we'll talk less about food and more about all the other things. Maybe give us some healthy hacks for the new year Sounds and what perfect. people can do. OK, yeah. we'll be right back after a word from my sponsor. Without looking at labels, do you actually know what is in the cleaning products that you use in your home? If you haven't addressed this yet, it's likely that you are spraying toxic and dangerous chemicals in your home. Three common ingredients that you want to avoid at all costs are ammonia, fragrance, and bleach. These ingredients and chemicals can contribute to chronic respiratory problems, allergic reactions, allergies, cancer, hormonal issues, headaches, and more. So what's the solution to a healthier, clean home for your family? Tease Organics, all-purpose cleaner, and room sprays. Tease products are formulated with the power of an essential oil blend. Her all-purpose cleaner gives you a clean surface, shower, toilet, or simply just use it to spot clean or dust. 
and all without harsh chemicals. And to make it even better, Tea's Organics All-Purpose Cleaner uses 100% organic essential oils and has a sweet yet spicy herbal aroma with hints of citrus. Imagine a fresh, inviting scent and sparkling clean home that you know is free from toxic, potentially harmful, and cancer-causing chemicals. I use these products, and I can personally attest to all of the above. And right now, enjoy a 15% discount by applying 15 Debbie, D-E-B-I, to your order. So check out these amazing products by Tees Organics that are healthy for you and your home. Welcome back. We're back with my guest. We're talking about New Year's resolutions and healthy hacks, especially with food, what we can do to lose weight and feel better at changing our lifestyle for 2023 and keeping it going throughout the year. So not just doing a restart at the beginning of every new year. Um, and we were just talking about food. Uh, before we shift gears and talk about all the other things that we want to do to uh, be healthy and stay in alignment, what um, what do you suggest? Because we were talking about sugar and it's in everything. How do we curtail sugar cravings? How do we avoid sugar? Okay, so we spoke about having protein for breakfast, right? Yes. Critical step number one and healthy fats that will keep you full for longer. But for somebody that has a sweet tooth like me, mm -hmm. one of the things I recommend my clients do is we roast sweet potatoes mm -hmm. with a good olive oil, and then you add walnuts and cinnamon. And cinnamon provides this sweet effect that really spices the whole thing up and it calms down your cravings. And by having these sweet, starchy, healthy vegetables throughout the day, your cravings can go down too. Oh, that's good. That's good. It's funny, Marissa was at my house last night with my granddaughter um, and I had to teach. So she decided to make sweet potato fries. And, um, and sorry, Marissa, if you're listening, I know you burned them. You didn't mean to, but she added cinnamon and I hadn't heard of that before. It's so and I was good. like, and Marissa, that's exactly what Marissa said. <laughs> yeah. But apart from the flavor being amazing, cinnamon, it's actually helps for blood sugar control. So right. if you are struggling with blood sugar and your um, levels are higher, adding cinnamon brings it down. Okay, to just about anything, like you yes. were saying earlier. I, I add, add it to, to my coffee. Everything. I add it to my coffee. Yeah. I add it to no, my... I brew it in my... Oh, I you, brew, you, it. Add, you yeah. brew it with it? Yeah. I just add it on top. On top. That makes yeah. more sense. I don't <laughs> know. I started making cinnamon coffee back in the 80s, and it's stuck, you know? Yeah. In Mexico, we make cinnamon tea. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've had it there before. Yeah. yeah. Really yummy. It's so delicious. So it actually has been proven in many, many studies to help bring your blood sugar down. Okay, so that's going to help with the cravings. And I have to say, in all, you know, before we shift from food, that and, and something I suggest to my clients all the time, and hopefully they, they you know, do it, um, is to buy organic and to see the source of your food. So to see if you're buying meat, animal products, are these animals sustainably caught, wild caught? Are they free range? Are they, how are they being fed? How are they being, because whatever they eat, you eat. <laughs> so, because we're eating them. So, you know, if, if, you, if you are eating animal protein, really check out the source of your protein and yeah. be has working its way back from where it's. Completely, I mean, when it comes to beef, I would say have it less, but make sure it's grass fed. Mm -hmm. Of course. Because I know it's more expensive, so you want to balance the two. Yeah. I would say have it less times, have it once a week, have it twice a month. But if it's grass fed, it actually has a better proportion of healthy fatty acids that benefit us. Right. And the ones that have been corn fed or anything like that, they actually tend to cause problems in our heart. Right. So, so you, yeah, and they're well not to it. mention that they're causing problems in our in environment. The environment. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah. So that's the source of the food is important. So let's let's talk about um, other healthy things that we should be doing for the new year. Like what, you know, we. Let, I guess the most the next thing to talk about. One of the things I'm an expert with is exercise yes, and movement. why why that is important. Why movement is so important because it's important for the way we digest our food too, right? It's important for everything. Yes. I would say everything counts. Don't feel like you have to do 
one hour of HIIT workouts every day, it actually can be contraproductory. Is that, is that a word? Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it can be bad for you if you overdo it because right. you're putting your body in stress. But I would say walk, move, like we were talking about, just dance around your room. Exercise and movement helps to keep you your body moving, using up that energy, flushing toxins, and feeling better, right? right? And developing muscle mass, which we tend to lose as we age. Mm-hmm. It's a big one. It's a big, big one. one. And that Adam will bone. also allow you to continue to eat, which I love. <laughs> so if you can have more muscle mass, you can eat more calories yeah. and not put on weight and feel better. Yeah. And, and, and the older we get, we want to keep pushing heavy weight because yes. that's really important. I mean, there is there's some great places out there that, and I actually had somebody on my show recently who um, have... Uh, studios that are gyms but the very specific for they're called max maximum strength and they actually you do very specific exercises to pull heavy weight and then each time you kind of go up a little bit more and there are other types of ways of doing this but what they've found is not only do we build and keep muscle but we're also building bone and keeping bone from loss which is a huge part of hormone loss and yes. aging and but we but what I didn't realize until this past year is that bone can be rebuilt that bone can you can put bone back that you have lost so for people that are in osteopedia mm-hmm. which i'm sure some of your clients have hit that with bone scans they know their numbers aren't good they can actually pushing yeah, heavy strength weight training is, will allow you to put calcium back into your bones and the restructure of that right so it's super good really important very beneficial and then along with the more meditative balance Yes. flow stuff that we do in yoga and I have to admit I you know Marissa and and my younger daughter Hannah have always been into yoga because of their dance background um, but it was the last maybe seven years or so that they really took that up a notch and I just stayed back from it but as I'm getting older you know and in my 60s it's um, it's so beneficial it's, it's one of my favorite things in the whole wide world. I call it my moving meditation because yes. you're continuously moving. So it's not you don't have to meditate and sit like this and do nothing, which some people do very, very well. I still haven't managed to do it very well. Yeah. Um, so if I can move and not think and really calm my central nervous system down, it really helps. And that's the other thing that we need to control, stress, right? Yes. Stress is so critical to manage these cortisol levels that push us because our body doesn't know that it's not a lion chasing you yes that is your boss with a deadline that is for tomorrow and all this stress of i have this deadline i have to finish or the kids screaming or whatever it is so if you can actually manage your stress levels exercise helps with that i have a better stress response once i've exercised throughout the day i can cope with much more yeah or coming down or going for a five minute walk around the block or just taking a two minute break with your tea Anything where you can breathe and calm your central nervous system will help with your future health forever. Absolutely, because if you shoot out those adrenals, those are that's going to dictate everything else that happens in your body. So yeah. stress plays a huge part. Food can help with that because if you're eating crappy food, it's a lot harder to feel good and you become more stressed. You know, and it's just and then of course talking about cortisol, sleep. How yes. important is that? Oh my God! Um, I didn't realize how important it was until you start to hit this stage, and you and sleep is actually sometimes more important than anything else. Like everything needs to be in balance, but seven to eight hours of sleep, good quality sleep, are key mm-hmm. for your body to do everything it needs to do, and yep. for the hormones to work and all the messengers to go around your body. So, sleep is key, and I would say, and I'd say this to my clients. One to two hours before going to bed, you need to stop looking at screens. We are mm-hmm. so screen connected. And you need to come down and you need to maybe read a book or start to do journaling, anything that takes your mind off the day so you can come down and go to sleep. And go to sleep. You dim the lights, exactly. get your, because our body clocks are such yeah. that when it gets dark, uh, we naturally start to get more tired. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that's just, that's primal. That's humans, you know, what humans do is they, they work with the sun. And um, so, you, so you need to stop revving things up. You need to start calming things down, including the overhead, 
bad lighting and bright lights. Yes. I always have dimmers or I change light bulbs in yeah, my houses. Yeah. Super important. And then in the morning, spend 20 minutes in the sun if you can. Yeah, first thing in the morning. First thing in the morning. Those of us who have to walk our dogs, I'm one of them. You <laughs> uh, know. Me too. <laughs> yeah, so right away you're in the sun, you get that sunlight, you get that vitamin D. Yeah, also and it develops fresh air. melatonin for the evening. Yeah, it, oh, right. Yeah, it's exactly. actually telling your body, hey, this is a circadian rhythm, it'll balance it out. This is morning. This is the start. This is the start. Here's and the middle. Then you're in. Here's mm-hmm. the finish. Yeah, and you get your body in that habit. And I always say, um, stop eating three hours before you go to bed. It's yes. always a good hack um, because that way your body has time. Number one, you're going to fall asleep a lot faster. And number two, your body will have time to assimilate and get all the vitamins, nutrients, and minerals. Because really, it's kind of like we're putting ourselves in the garage to be, you know, to kind of have a tune up when we sleep. And that's when our cells re rejuvenate. That's when yes. we get rid of the toxins. And so in order to do that, you got to give your body all the right jump start for that. So absolutely. And so that's one of the key, key things to do. So obviously, we spoke about food, movement, exercise, all of that, and then sleep critical all the most important things and and one of the other big hacks that I say because this is a big start for me with a lot of my clients who have a hard time because you know they're they're in it they they're feeling crappy they're 20 30 pounds overweight they're they may be moving but they just can't get the food thing down and one of the things I just say to start simple because we you know small little baby steps can lead to they new really habits over a period of time just start drinking more water. Well, if you start with me as a client, that's the first the thing. The first you're thing. Get. That's a, yeah. <laughs> and it's the easiest thing to do. Half your body weight in ounces, minimum. Now, sometimes that's a little hard at first. So build yourself up to that. And if you're taking a hot yoga class or a high Obviously intensity, go inter- I teach spin classes, which are high intensity intervals for an hour, you need to go a little more. A little bit more. Exactly, and but you're right. Start dehydration with is the catalyst for many things in, in the disease game. So Yeah, and it actually, if you're dehydrated, you might feel hungry. But it might not be hunger. It might just be dehydration. So drink water first. Yeah. Calm your system and then see if you're actually hungry. Right. And a lot of people don't realize that, that they're usually dehydrated. If you feel thirsty, you're dehydrated. You don't want to get to that point where you're thirsty. And there and there again goes back to the food sources. What's in your food? What are the, you know, is there MSG in there? That's going to make you oh, thirsty. Oh, that makes you so thirsty. And it's just, yeah. it's a chemical that our bodies don't assimilate for the most part. They don't yeah. know how to absorb it. Oh, so. You know, I hadn't had MSG in a long time. And I was traveling in Singapore about two months ago. And my boss took me to this restaurant, and I swear, then like two hours later, I, I was so thirsty. Oh, uh, yeah. And I was like, what's going on? And you blow up, your no, body gets puffy. A, I did not feel good. I started to feel, and, and my skin got tingly. Yeah. It was so weird. And I'm like, oh my God, they still use MSG here. And That's, I had, the I had it forever, right? That's the chemicals. That's the chemicals that chemicals. your body, yeah. yeah. And it's, uh, you know, again, it goes back to what's in your food, what's the source. And I always, you know, when we, when we I talk about food and what and how we should be living, and I mentioned it earlier, the blue zones. And there's a new book out by, um, oh, first name, but last name, Butler. Mm-hmm. Um, he's, he's the blue zone guy. And there's a new book out, uh, you know, it's so scientifically proven in living a lifestyle, not only with just the food and the movement, but also social. social. That was what I was going to say. Who are you? Who's your tribe? Who are you around? What are you doing to find joy in your life? And where's are you spiritual? And spiritual doesn't mean religion. Oh, no, zero. It doesn't have to. It can, you know, it just means what is it that makes you happy? What sparks the feel-good stuff and yes and who are the people connecting yes. to others yes connecting to the universe that you're part of that that connecting to your social tribe like i love you know in italy where they go out and have a glass of wine with their neighbor That's and they just chat one of the blue, one zones, of the blue zones, zones and they last yeah. for, like they last forever they live up to over a hundred yes i'm like that's gonna be me. Yes, because <laughs> it's that social camaraderie. You know how you feel when you're gonna go to a party or or even a reunion, and you know you're gonna see people that you connect with. You know that feeling is so good. 
why not keep it going? Why not try to find that on a daily basis? Find where you connect, find your social yes. way, and, and spread yourself out. And the other thing I like to tell my clients I think is important for a, a New Year hack is try something new. All Give the time. yourself, mix yes. it up. Don't don't be a creature of habit necessarily. If the good habit's great, but mix up, maybe find something that scares you a little bit and allow yourself to, you'd be surprised how successful you can be at something you thought you could never, ever, whether it be a dance class, song, acting, uh, car racing, whatever it might be to get your adrenaline up. It keeps you the know. excitement in life. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, and that's the same thing with trying different foods and trying new things. Um, and the other thing I wanted to mention is to maintain a healthy lifestyle, it has to be holistic. It has to be everything we've mentioned, but also try to be flexible. Mm, I think that that's it's a good one. When you decide, I'm on a diet, and then you reach your goal, and then you're not on the diet, but you go back to the old self everything goes down the pan and then you have to restart every January, right, right? right? But if you treat it as a lifestyle and say, okay, 80% of the time I'm gonna eat what is exactly good for my body, but I'm gonna do all the good things, I'm gonna exercise, I'm gonna be social, etc. And 20% of the time you might not be as good. It becomes a healthy lifestyle. That's right. That you can maintain and it's exciting and it's good and you know that if you fall off the wagon, you just retake it the next day. That's right. It's part of your life. Right, because uh, one of the things we're talking about, we're not talking about diets. We are oh, talking no. about lifestyle. And uh, there are hundreds and hundreds of dietary theories out there that confuse us and that that's the quick fix. They never work. Take it from two experts right here. They never work. It's lifestyle. It's small, sustainable steps that change your habits to bad to from bad to good or maybe from okay habits to better but in unless you change a l overall lifestyle these quick fast fad things whether even an exercise fad they're going to work for a second that's why i hate that show the biggest loser it's oh. just so it's so fast and furious that 90% of those contestants just go back to the way they were because they didn't change their habits no. and what we're talking about is about introducing all these things as part of your life. And once you do that, this is the way you live, and it's just you. Yes, right? exactly. And, and, and that's the best we can do. And, and we're winding down. I want you to tell people you have a giveaway that you're giving to my audience that um, I want them to see, and I will get, put them up on the show notes, and then how people can reach you. And I'd mentioned at the top how they can reach me, but we're here to help you. So, you know, get in touch with us for the new year to change those bad habits to healthy ones for a sustainable lifestyle that is going to be a life of joy and health. So how can people reach you? Okay, you can reach me on my website. It's www.nuritreich.com. Um, in there, you can find a freebie that I give everybody. It's six top things that you can do every day to maintain a healthy lifestyle, balance hormones, etc. And what Debbie was mentioning is I am actually doing a sugar detox challenge in January. And I proposed to her that we can keep the Black Friday deal. So she's going to put the link for you guys. It's five days, full meals, menu planned. I just finished the menu. It's so delicious. You're not going to miss sugar. I promise there's sweet things in there that are so good for you. There's all the healthy proteins and fats at the right times. It has two snacks so you never go hungry. And it's the perfect way to kickstart your habits and start to become this, your healthy lifestyle. And then you can find me on Instagram as well, at Nurit Reich. And you're so wonderful because you post almost every day. And I that's do. What and I love spreading the joy of healthy living. And um, this is exactly what we're passionate about over here. Thank you so, so much for giving your time and expertise to my audience. And before we go, I want you to leave with some final words, final thoughts. Um, Got life, you on that one. <laughs> yes, she did. I think life's really short mm -hmm. and we need to enjoy it fully every single day. And if you can do that joyfully, why not? So come join us. I swear, I think from me and from Debbie, when you eat healthily, you'll feel much more vibrant and you'll show fully to your life. And that's exactly what we like to share to the world. So I hope that leaves you with a nice message and that the new year brings you so much joy and uh, a healthy lifestyle. 
Very good. Thank you so much. That Thanks was beautiful. Thanks for coming to the studio during this holiday season. It was I really appreciate you and appreciate your time. And I appreciate you, my audience. Thank you for being with me today. And go ahead and just give us a little like so we know that you're out there or to say hi. And remember to keep going out and finding those conversations that connect to a healthier you. Bye, everybody. I'm going to see you the second week in January, back to the second and fourth Tuesdays. See you then. Bye. Thank you.